All right, welcome to the Coxcomb in southern Utah. This amazing landscape of rock uh, that's been sculpted by erosion, but also a big player in the rocks we see here are the structures. This is part of the East Kaibab monocline, a fold or flexure, if you will, in the Earth's crust where the rocks have been bent and tilted. We can see some of these fins of rock here and just over the sign here as well. And we're on a little hike here to check out Cottonwood, Cottonwood Narrows, which is a place I've been to several times, but I haven't been here in maybe, maybe 15 plus years. So I'm excited to check it out again and explore it with you as well. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. We're here with our family and friends. We're gonna take a little hike through the Cottonwood Narrows, uh, check out not only the Slot Canyon itself, but because it's along this flexure, this bend in the Earth's crust where this monocline exists, there's some really cool structures in the sandstone. So we'll be checking this out together as we go. So let's, let's go down the trail and see what awaits us. All right, you can see the main unit here is all this white sandstone. This is all part of the Navajo sandstone. And this is the main uh, slot canyon forming unit that we find in Southern Utah. It's um, very medium grained sandstone. It's largely homogeneous. So it's the same grain size throughout. It doesn't have a lot of interbeds of mudstone or limestone or any rock type. So it erodes quite uniformly. Um, because of that, because it's quite resistant, the only way that the water can erode it is not so much laterally side to side, but vertically downward. And that's why it makes such great slot canyons. So here's the trail entrance here. We're gonna go ahead and hike down the trail, um, down into the Narrows. This is a non-technical slot canyon, so anyone can hike down in here. So here we have the entrance to one section of Narrows uh, in the sandstone. And before we head in, I think it's worthwhile to think about the way this sandstone has been deformed um, in the process of this monocline being created, which would have occurred about at the end of the Cretaceous, maybe 70 to 60 or so million years ago. So as these rigid rocks were deformed by the bending and the flexure of this monocline, of this fold, you can see all the fractures that have, uh, are just riddled through the rock here, all these cracks. But then we, what we also see here is that these fractures are actually filled in with mineral material. So you can see a lot of these are these white lines, these veins that crisscross the rock, which is not typical of this Navajo sandstone. Usually it's pretty uniform. You don't see this degree of deformation and vein uh, material filling the Navajo sandstone. So just pretty spectacular here. As a structural geologist, you can really dive into these things, look at the fractures, look at the, measure their uh, orientations. You can see that some of these are actually not just fractures, but faults. Uh, we can see in here where there is um, some offset of the layers. So here's a nice little example right here where these dark layers have been offset across this fault. You can see this little layer here bumps over to this point here. Um, so there's certainly a degree of faulting that's associated with this as well. Even though the broad scale picture is a big fold, um, the monocline at the Earth's surface, uh, at fine detail here, there are lots of small fractures and faults where there has been some offset of the rock layers. So here we are in this lovely section of Narrows. And again, we've been checking out slot canyons all week down here, very different in this one. The, the, the rock characteristics, the textures, all these white veins crisscrossing the rock, very different than what we've been seeing in the Navajo sandstone in other places. Again, due to the intense deformation uh, along the, the monocline go up a little further. Characteristic cross bedding, uh, the layering in the Navajo sandstone here. And another big vein on this wall straight in front of us. And you might be able to see, looks like there's maybe 
a bit of offset on this as well. Um, see if we can see this. So there's this nice layer, this little line that comes across, hits the vein, uh, but then it's offset up here. So there's this, this vein here is actually along a fault. It's down on the right side uh, composed as compared to the left side. So that would make this a, a normal fault where it's broken and, and slid down a little bit. So some great small scale structural features in here. You could really just spend some time in here just looking at uh, all the small amazing structures, more veins cutting through this here. And again, it's because the Navajo sandstone is so finely bedded with all these thin layers in it that we can actually see the offset of those layers across some of these faults. So let's uh, check out some other sections further up. So it looks like it opens up here coming to this upper section of the Narrows. So we'll head back, but um, one thing that you can always do in these slot canyons or any drainage for that matter, that's somewhat helpful if you're interested in understanding more about the, uh, not just the dynamics of the slot canyon, but what the origin of the rocks are that that given drainage transports is you can start looking at the, the gravel and cobbles that you see in the bed of the stream. So here we have a nice uh, conglomerate here with all these pebbles glued together. Um, so this is coming from somewhere further upstream in this section of creek. The other thing it looks like we have down here are pieces of volcanic rocks. So there are, it's draining an area that also has some volcanic rocks exposed as well. This drainage I think comes out of uh, the area up towards Bryce Canyon. So there may be some areas up there that have some of the these volcanics exposed and so they get transported down. Um, really nice view here as we kind of head down into the slot of the fractures again, veins in the Navajo sandstone, uh, some of the cross bedding here. And then remember, these are all carved out by flash floods, um, events that mobilize the gravel on the bed of the stream, flush out the sand. And then once that gravel gets down along the bed of the stream where the rock is, it can actively scour out and make the canyon even deeper during those bigger flooding events. When the floods wane or when you have a smaller flooding event, you oftentimes, you know, depositing some of that sand back into the canyon. But one thing you can usually see um, on these canyon walls is places where the rocks that have been transported, like this nice big uh, quartzite cobble right here, down here at my feet, these very resistant hard rocks that are carried, those are the ones really doing a lot of the work. But you can see how they sculpt and shape the walls but the other thing we can see in here in places are these, these little holes, these little um, indentations or depressions where these cobbles actually bang into the walls of the canyon um, and leave little um, depressions, little marks on the wall here. You can see a bunch of these along the wall in here, just these little dings and depressions, shallow depressions in the rock. You get some of these um, almost pothole shapes in here where the circulating water has eroded out a bit of a, a fluted shape or a pothole sort of shape there. Just spectacular. Just hiking through slot canyons has always been very high on my list. Um, yeah, let's head down a little bit further and see what else we can check out here in the canyon. Here we can actually see, um, here we can actually see the top of the Navajo sandstone and then the overlying Carmel formation uh, sitting just above it. Let's go up and look at those red rocks and see how different they are compared to these uh, buff colored sandstones that we've been hiking through in the Narrows. Let's see if we can get up this slope. 
Um, and the Carmel Formation represents a period when sea level had risen, and so you get um, more mud, rich rocks, some limestones, mainly though coastal deposits. And you can see here we have a nice slab with some ripple marks in it. So you can see the ripples going up and down. I think these have mostly been interpreted as tidal flat deposits. Looks like we get some more of these ripples in the wall over here. Let's see if we can make our way up here. Oh yeah, this is great. So you can see right here, just the undulating ripple marks. And if you look at the ripple marks end on, you oftentimes can get some clues about the depositional environment. We can see these ripple marks are fairly symmetrical. There's not really a steep side or a gentle side. When you have asymmetrical ripple marks, a lot of times that indicates uh, a current, like could be wind or water, but basically there's something uh, pushing the sediment in one direction versus these more symmetrical ripple marks are from an oscillating current. So the tide comes in, the tide goes out, the waves are sloshing back and forth. And that's more of what we see here in these tilted beds of the Carmel Formation. So some really, really spectacular ripple marks in here. Again, just a little something different here. Beautiful slab right here with the colors too. You can really see those ripple marks pop. Fantastic. So let's uh, head back down to the trail and uh, continue on down the narrows. So it looks like the walls are getting a little taller here as we head down the wash. Uh, you can see top of the cliff there. And then as we come down, you can see the floor of the wash, maybe up to 100 feet or so, 30 meters maybe in this particular area. And you know, really for a narrow section of canyon, you know, maybe not a true slot canyon where you're going sideways and it's more technical. This is a, a great, um, very accessible, narrow canyon. If you want to see this kind of scenery, I highly recommend this one. There's very few obstacles, if any. The floor of the wash is generally pretty flat. Um, it's dog friendly. No cliffs to climb up or down. It has two different entrances. So if you have a couple cars, you can actually set up a bit of a shuttle. Wind's kind of picking up in here as it funnels through this canyon. I think we have a change in weather coming in. And it's interesting is the, the creek in the canyon cuts through different parts of the sandstone. You can see some areas where the sandstone is, you know, less deformed by the flexure of the monocline, the bending and breaking of the rocks. There's a few little veins in here, uh, a couple more over on this side, but it's largely it's, you know, more or less undisturbed Navajo sandstone. Um, you can also see the primary bedding surfaces. Let's see if we can find this right here. So you can see these rocks are tilted to the left, but just maybe about 20 degrees or so. It's a very uh, low angle bedding surface. Other parts is the canyon kind of cuts through different parts of the fold. The beds are tilted at much higher angles. You can actually see the, the bedding up here as well, the primary bedding surfaces um, that are east dipping and then the steeper cross beds, which truncate against those primary bedding surfaces. Here's these cross beds coming up and they run into, again, this primary bedding surface. Sections of the canyon where it is narrow and then sections like this where it opens up a little bit. Um, really nice view of the skyline there. So we'll keep heading down and uh, film anything that we find interesting or any cool features we see along the way. So here's a fun surprise, just you know, walking down the canyon. And then we run into a section where we have to walk uphill. That doesn't make sense if I'm going down canyon and there's a different color around us. It's this whiter 
sand that just kind of dominates. There's sand everywhere. And all the blocks of rock here are all broken. So what I think's happened here, and probably fairly recently, at least, you know, I, I can't say if it was within the last year, um, but maybe, and maybe so recently that the stream, which has frequent flash floods, has not had a chance to scour out this material, but it looks like we've had a fairly recent rockfall event. So a block or many blocks of sandstone have fallen down into the canyon, blocking it up and raising it up uh, several feet. Here you can see the rest of the canyon continuing on here, but there's this swath here at this bend where there's all this white sand. And you know, looking up at the walls, there's a few, few places up there that look pretty fresh and maybe like the most likely culprits, maybe this little section down here, but maybe even more striking is this white, fresh, clean exposure of rock up along uh, the skyline there. Maybe that's uh, the place where a large mass of rock fell, tumbled, crashed, that sandstone would have broken into smaller pieces. And that's what we see kind of littering the canyon down here. There's a few big blocks down here along the bottom of the canyon. Everything's very angular. A couple other big blocks like this one over here, maybe up to two or three meters in diameter, but yeah, kind of a cool treat here. Um, and it would be neat to see how long does it take the flash floods and the erosional activity of these streams to actually scour this out. Obviously the next flash flood is going to come down, is going to hit this, this rock fall debris, and it's going to basically be like a, like a dam. And so the water is going to back up behind it, start to flow over it at some point if there's enough water, and that will remove a lot of the material and kind of start the process of uh, reestablishing the pathway. Um, but looking down from here at the top of the, uh, the rock fall down to the, where the stream bed is, is a good vertically maybe um, five meters, about 15, 16 feet or so. So pretty interesting. You never know what you're gonna find in these rock canyons as you, as you hike. It's always changing, a very dynamic environment, not just with the flash floods, but with other processes as well. Let's maybe spin around and look at that one more time just so you can kind of see it from the bottom edge. So here's the bed of the stream where it's kind of dark. Then you can see where it becomes white. Uh, and then looking up the slope there at where that rockfall likely occurred. Well, thanks for joining me on this fun little hike through Cottonwood Narrows here in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in Southern Utah, right along the East Kaibab Monocline or what's known as the Coxcomb, this just impressive scenic landscape of folded rock, uh, fins and hogsbacks of rock sticking up out of the earth. Just really cool landscape. We got to see some interesting features here in the Navajo sandstone. And thanks again for joining me. Appreciate your support of the channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to donate to making more of these geology videos, there are links under the description. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Take care.